Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. In this episode of Blazor Train, I'll show you how to do basic authentication and authorization in a Blazor server app using ASP.NET Core Identity, which comes in the box car. The, uh, the box. It comes in the box. You could start out using a local DB SQL database, and then you can move it somewhere else at a later time. Just change your connection string and you'll be zooming down the tracks to success. So I purposely made this episode drop dead easy to follow. I don't go into the dirty details of how all this stuff works. You can read the documentation on your own time to figure that out. Now, I'm going to show you how to get off up and running quickly and easily. And that's coming up right now, right here on Blazor Train. See what I did there? Blazor Train! So I've created a GitHub repo here at uh, github.com slash Carl Franklin slash basic auth. And uh, this is the Blaze server app plus all of the instructions that you need to recreate it. So first things first, definitions. Authentication is the process of confirming that a user is the person they say they are. And that user is represented as an identity. Authorization is different. Now that we know the user's identity, what are we going to allow them to do? Authorization is allowing the user to access aspects of your application based on their identity and the roles or claims they present. So what's a role? Simply a name like admin, supervisor, or content manager. You can assign users to one or more roles and then check those roles at runtime to authorize the user to do or see an aspect of the application. We're going to use roles in this module. Claims are a little bit different. A claim is an assertion by the user, such as their name, email address, but also can be very specific to an aspect of the application, such as can click the counter button. A claim is like a role, but more specific to the action they want to perform or the aspect they want to access. Claims are currently being favored over roles in the industry, but role-based authentication is still very useful and very powerful. There are many ways to do authentication and authorization in a Blazor server application. We're going to use the Microsoft Identity subsystem, including support for roles. The Blazor server template gives us everything we need to generate an identity database, which is a standard schema used by the Microsoft Identity subsystem. Well. Almost everything, you'll see. We're going to create a new Blazor server application in which we will allow users to register. We can then authorize sections of markup, entire pages, and even code based on whether or not the user is authenticated and what roles they are in. So let's create a Blazor server application project, and I'm going to call it Basic Auth. Now this is the critical step. Rather than just creating a Blazor server project without any authentication stuff, we're going to select this authentication type right here, individual accounts. So what that does is it installs everything we need to use this authentication database, allow the user to register and log in, and then with a little tweak, we can add support for roles. So I have the SQL Server Object Explorer up. And if you don't have it up, you can go to View, SQL Server Object Explorer right there. And then right here in the top, Local DB, I'm going to expand databases. And you'll see that I have a couple of databases that I've used before, but there's nothing that this template has created for us yet. But we have all the building blocks of creating this database. Let's look over here in Areas, Identity, Pages, Account. We have a Logout and a Logout Partial, but we also have this. 
a revalidating identity authentication state provider, say that five times fast, that does the heavy lifting for us. Now, what about that database? Well, if you look in app settings, you'll see this default connection right here using local DB and the database name is ASP.NET dash basic auth, because that's the name of our project, dash, and then this GUID here. And that GUID string means that it's going to be a unique database name, because what if you've already created a project called basic auth, right? Well, this is a situation where Visual Studio is trying to save me from myself. So I'm going to delete this GUID. And I'm going to delete this ASP.NET dash. So the name of our database is going to be basic off. Now I said is going to be. How do we actually create it? Well, save everything here. And I'm going to go to the package manager console and issue this command update dash database. And what's going to happen is check out the data folder here. And then under migrations, look at this. We've already got an application DB context. Now you can ignore the weather stuff, right? But this migration includes the schema to create the database. All we have to do is say update dash database. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Done. Now, if I go over here and refresh the database list, there it is, basic auth. If you look at the tables, we've got our users right here. We've got our roles here. We've got role claims. We've got user claims and user roles. We have users, we have roles, and user roles combines those two saying that this user is in this role, but there's more to it than this. Now I mentioned roles, that right out of the box, if we just start using it right now, the roles won't mean anything. To make roles work, we have to go to program, and let me make some more room here. And then right here where we're adding default identity, on line 18, we're gonna add this add roles of identity role. And now we can use roles. Now, if I ran this right now, it would look no different from any other Blazor server application, except that I'd be able to register and log in. But the application isn't going to respond to a logged in user any differently than it would to a non-logged in user. For that, we have to do some authorization. And we're going to start with the nav menu. You know, the nav menu, it has nav links to the home page, to the counter page, and to the fetch data page. Well, what if we wanted to only show the counter page to logged in users? In other words, you have to be authenticated before you can see this link. Well, for that, we're going to do this. Authorized view. We're going to wrap this markup in an authorized view. And now, when we run this, even without registering, we are not going to see counter. Check it out. There you go. We can go to home, we can go to fetch data, but we can't go to counter because that authorized view component says, hey, only show this if the user is logged in. Doesn't say anything about roles though. And you should also note that if I navigate directly to counter, it's still there because we haven't authorized this page. We have, if we put an authorized view around the entire page, then we'd have more control over it. But we'll get there, okay? Now for fetch data, let's go one step further and say, oh, not only does the user have to be logged in, but they have to be in a role called admin. All right, so we don't have any roles yet, but this is where we're going. 
Okay, let's register as a new user. I'm going to create a new account, my user at myplace.com. And I'm just going to pick a password that doesn't have to be really secure. This is only running on our local machine, local database, but I have one that I use all the time. Confirm it. Now, there's a lot more to it than this, right? We don't have an email sender registered, so we can't do email confirmation. And what does that mean anyway? Well, take a look. If we look in the database for ASP.NET users, this email confirmed right here is false. But when I click here to confirm my account, watch what happens. Now it's true. So the trick is email confirmed has to be set to true. Hey, you know, if you want to roll your own email confirmation, that's fine. But the identity system has built in all sorts of great help for that. We're just not going to go there today. All right, now let's log in. And there we go. Now we can see counter, but we don't see fetch data because we're not in that role. And it should be noted that I can still navigate to fetch data, no problem. So next, let's talk about securing these pages. Starting with the counter, if you simply add this attribute, authorize, to the page, yeah, I know you've seen that before when you're doing secure APIs, right? But in Blazor, we can authorize a page just like that. Now this says the user can't see this page, even if they navigate to it directly unless they're logged in. Now, anytime you make a change and you're logged in, you have to log out and log in again. Okay, here's counter, as we expected. But if I log out, I can't see counter in the nav menu. And if I try to go there directly, not authorized. Wah, wah. All right, so that's good. We have secured the counter page. Now remember how I set up the nav menu for roles, for fetch data, roles admin. How can we secure the fetch data page saying that we can only see it if we're authorized and we're in the admin role? Well, it turns out that's pretty easy. So let's go to fetch data. So it's still the authorized attribute, but now in parentheses, we specified roles equals, and then a comma separated list of roles. In our case, there's just one admin. Let's try it again. Okay. I can only see counter and can I navigate to fetch data? No, I'm not authorized because I'm not in that admin role. So how do I set the admin role? Well, it turns out there isn't a way, with software anyway, built into Visual Studio to manage users and roles in that database. So what I did was I created a library to let us do that. In episode 84 of Blazor Train Identity Management, I introduced this library, Identity Manager Library. So what it is, is it's a .NET standard class library that's based on this GitHub repo by M. Guinness that I showed that lets you manage users and roles. And it's just a wrapper around the code in the identity system, but there isn't anything in the template, as I said. So this has two parts. It includes the library, but also a demo that's a Blazor application, a Blazor server application that we can use for that. So what I've done is I've cloned the repo, right? You could also just download the zip file and run the Blazor application. All right, so there's two projects in here. Here's the Identity Manager Blazor server, which is the app that uses the Identity Manager library. And if you go to app settings JSON, all you really have to do 
is tell it to use that same database with the same connection string, and then it does the rest. So let's run it. So if I look in users, you can see I have one user there, there's no roles. And if I look in roles, there are no roles here either. So I'm gonna click new and add a new role called, guess what, admin. There you go. Now, if I go back to users and I edit my user at myplace.com, which is our user, now I can check off that I want them to be in the admin role and hit save. Okay, we're just going to close this because we're going to come back to it and get back to our basic auth app. Now, remember what we did. We just added our user to the admin role. We're assigned the admin role to our user, however you want to say it. But we have to log out and log in again. Okay, now we have counter and we have fetch data. Very good. So far, we've authorized access to markup here, right? And we've used the authorized attribute to authorize these two pages right here, including role-based authorization, but that's only for the page. So far, we've only done the markup and the page. What I'd really like to do is do some code authorization. In other words, I want to inspect the user and see what role they're in as they try to do something like click the counter. And if they're not in that role, I'm not going to allow them to click the counter. Now, of course, counter could be anything, right? It's just a demo. The point is, you can inspect the user, see if they're authenticated, and see what roles they're in in the app as code is running. So let me show you how to do that. First of all, let's look at app.razor. So this cascading authentication state is here wrapped around the entire application because we specified that we wanted to use individual accounts, which means we're using the identity subsystem. And therefore, we can access this cascading authentication state as a cascading parameter anywhere. So let's do that in counter. All right, we'll go through this from the top. We've got our authorized attribute, no problem there. Meaning you can't even see this page if you're not logged in. And I've added this error message, right? And I'm gonna show that in red if there's a problem. I've also got my cascading parameter, which is a private task of authentication state and I make it nullable because it could be null. And I also have a claims principle. Now, the claims principle essentially represents the logged in user or the identity of the user, right? So let's go down to increment count. I've got a couple of centuries here. If the user is null, return. And this should never happen because viewing the page is an authorized access thing. You can't view the page if you're not authorized, so it should never happen. Also, this user identity is authenticated, should never happen. But I wanted to put that in there because you can look at that. You can look at all these things. User is null, user identity is authenticated, is true, right? And then we're looking at if user is in role, and I've made one up here called counter clicker, then we can click no problem. But if we're not in that role, you do not have permission to increment the counter. Now, this is where we pull out that user in on initialized async. If authentication state is not null, and it could be because it's a cascading parameter, well, you know, then we await authentication state, which is a task of authentication state, remember? And then the user is going to be the user property of that. So now let's see what happens. Now remember, we have to log out and log in. 
Okay, now let's go to counter. And what do you think is going to happen? Wah, wah. We don't have permission to increment the counter because we're not in that counter clicker role. Hmm. How are we going to add ourselves to that role? Like this. Using the Identity Manager Blazor Server application. So I'm going to click Create Role, Counter Clicker, and I'll save. Then I'll go to my user, Edit, and add Counter Clicker to that user's roles. Now let's try it again. And everything works as expected. So today, we created a new Blazor server project with basic individual accounts, identity-based authentication. We added support for identity roles in Program CS. We modified the identity database connection string in AppSetX.json. We generated the database with the update database command. We ran the app and registered as a new user. Then we authorized markup in nav menu razor. We authorize the counter razor and fetch data razor pages with an attribute. And we use the Identity Manager Blazor server app to add roles and assign them. Finally, we authorize access to code using a claims principle object representing the user's identity. Now back to you in the studio, Carl. Yes, that was easy, wasn't it? Whoa, whoa. Next week, I'll show you how to add authentication and authorization to an existing Blazor app. We'll also talk about ways to customize the UI, and I might have a few more surprises too. Hey, thanks for riding the rails with me today. This is where I jump off. I'll see you next time. Blazor Train!